Um, I'm not going to spend too much time talking. I want to first appreciate all of you for being here and, and being part of my life. Um, everything that was said was basically a lie. I just want to let you all know that about me. Um, I do love what I do here. I love being part of chiropractic. And like, like Kevin was saying, literally, we've traveled to all the corners of, of the world talking about and preaching chiropractic, principled chiropractic. And I just want to, I was going to say something with one of, those, one of the, the videos there. There was a picture of a guy, Eric Chu, from Hong Kong. I don't know if you were watching it, but I just want you to know that was one of his offices that he was walking through. All right? He has several. And, and his, his first office was four floors in the most expensive building in the center of Hong Kong. His office has 3D motion x-ray, MRI, CAT scan. He has radiologists and orthopedists working for him, proving the chiropractic story. He does research on chiropractic in Hong Kong. He sees literally, his practices see thousands of people a week. And, and uh, the, the cool story about him is he really never got the, the, the big picture of chiropractic. He graduated, he went to NYCC. And, and why did he go to NYCC? Because the people in Hong Kong are very brand conscious and he wanted the name New York in Hong Kong because it sells. He's a phenomenal businessman. And uh, he, I don't know how he wound up at Life University for a, a, lead, a leadership weekend and uh, we got together talking, and we were just talking philosophy until like 3, 4 in the morning one night. And, and the next day, his entire life changed. He went back to Hong Kong, threw out all the therapies he had in his practice, hired associates. I think now Eric is up to something like 40 or 50 associates in his practices. Right? And, and all they do is adjust. But they do a lot of high-tech stuff proving chiropractic. You know, so, so that's just to give you a vision as to where you could really go with this profession. You know, is to go from a little home office to, you know, 15,000 square feet in a practice. And he literally changed the face of chiropractic in Asia. You know, so so th that's, that's the vision. Those are the type of people that somebody said, if you want to grow, hang out with somebody that's doing what you want to do, not what you're doing. Hang out with somebody that has a vision that's bigger than your vision. Hang out with somebody that's even more committed than you are. Because hanging out with them, you know, you catch their energy. You catch that magic. You know, and, and, and the more you hang out, the better it gets. I was, I, you know, I used to say, and I still believe it now, I only hung out with the top 10% of the profession. Even when I was a student and I would go down to Atlanta, I was at the bar with the top 10% of the profession. When I got, when we started the council, it was the top 10% of the New York chiropractors that were principled that started the council. You know, when I came, got involved with New Beginnings, it was the movers and shakers in Jersey that were changing chiropractic. So it's really true. To look around and see who you hang out with. Look around and see if they're doing the exact same thing you're doing. Because if they are, you need to get a new set of friends. Because you have to step out, when I say you, we all have to step out of our comfort zone to grow. All right? And, and I remember when I started in a winners, you know, a million years ago, we, Kathy and I wound up losing a lot of different friends because our belief systems changed. When I got into chiropractic, all of my undergraduate and high school friends disappeared because we weren't thinking the same way. We weren't, for lack of a better term, like Pasquale would say, we weren't vibrating at the same level. You know, and so when you start to vibrate at a higher level, what do you do? You attract people who are vibrating at that level. You bring them into your life. 
So it's really important to start to think, how comfortable are you where you're at right now? How complacent are you? You know, somebody said over the weekend, is, it, is your practice okay? Like if my practice never changed, I could go on forever this way. But the deal is every week, every day, we go in looking to see more people, help more people, grow more, make more money. And it's okay to make money in chiropractic, just so you guys know that. Because that's what's afforded me to travel around the world selling chiropractic. And it is selling. You know, in some of these foreign countries when you go, you know, you go into Germany, they have no chiropractic law. So anybody could put a shingle on their door that says chiropractic. So we go speak there. And I've told this story before. One of my most amazing lessons that I learned is I was in Germany a few years ago doing a one-day program with Kathy. And when I asked the guy who invited us to speak, well, two things happened. He asked me if I'd come to speak, and me and Kathy said, sure. And he goes, I'll, I'll pay you way over and stuff. I said, definitely sure. Um, and uh, I thought I was going to speak for an hour, because that's normally when somebody invites me to speak at a program, it's an hour. When I got there, I read the program, and it was, oh, a day of chiropractic with Jay and Kathy. I go, oh, shit. I usually can't talk that much. Well, Kathy will say, yes, you can, but I, I, you know, it, it's a lot of work. Um, so we're, we're eating lunch the, the day before with the, with the gentleman who set this whole thing up. And I go, Robert, I just want to know the type of audience I'm going to be talking to. Because, you know, I just want to know how to gear it. Is it students' perspective? Is it doctors? He, and he gets really quiet. And I go, what? He goes, well, a lot of the people in the audience aren't DCs. I go, yeah. He goes, there, there's, there's about a dozen medical doctors in the audience. I go, oh, great. He goes, no, no, but they're all medical doctors that are in the, in the midst or have become chiropractors. I'm going, okay, there's something that doesn't add up. But whatever. So we get to speak to them, and what I find out is, like, these doctors fell in love with the principal. And since there's no law in Germany for chiropractors, what they did is they sought out philosophy classes. They sought out technique classes. They went wherever they could go to find chiropractic. And there was one chiropractor that was teaching it. And he did a phenomenal job. To the point when we had a, every time we, we did a break in the room, two things would take place. They would come up and ask me, how do you explain an aid to your patients? How do you bring in the philosophy? How do you go through that? And then they had adjusting tables, and they were adjusting each other. The intensity and the commitment when they was lining up to make an adjustment, I haven't seen chiropractors do that in 30 years. I mean, they were so focused and so, they were great. So that was very interesting. Now fast forward a year after that, I get to do an inner winners in Germany. And eight or nine of them show up at my program. And the biggest problem that they were having was how do I step totally out of my orthopedic practice and into a chiropractic practice? I go, where in the States would we have that problem? I'm serious. Where would you have that problem? So I said, hey, listen, I'm, I'm a marketing person in my head. I go, I would never give up my orthopedic practice. And they looked at me like I was crazy. I said, as an orthopedist, you're going to attract people into your practice that you couldn't attract into as a chiropractor. So I said, now what you do when they show up, you tell them the chiropractic story and you say, you know, for the next six weeks, we're going to get you adjusted and we're going to watch what goes on. And then at the end of the six weeks, we'll do a reevaluation and determine whether you need further orthopedic care. So that gives you six weeks to make a lifetime chiropractic patient. And as you build up that chiropractic practice, you're going to see the orthopedic practice. I said, that's a marketing thing. What a great thing. And they did. And they have very viable practices. Now, when I talk about we had two or three orthopedists at the program, we had an OBGYN, OBGYN we had a pediatrician, we had, this was, she was my favorite. She was a helicopter trauma surgeon 
in, from Austria, she would fly in the Alps to save people. And like she said, I got to tell you, last week before I came here, I was teaching people how to do tracheotomies. And that somebody was talking about the rebar, that the event with the thing on your neck. Well, she didn't know that's what we we're going to do. She goes, oh, shit. I'm putting holes in people's necks so they can breathe, and I'm putting a piece of rebar in the same place. You know, but the point I want to make, when you present the beauty of chiropractic, the principle of chiropractic, and you stick to that principle, people get excited. These docs were more excited about chiropractic than 90% of the chiropractors I'd come in contact with in the States. So it's exciting to go there. It's a, now, I could have gone my ego and go, I'm not talking to them. They're medical doctors. I'm not talking to them. They're not real chiropractors. I'm not. They're adjusting and changing the world. And, and the world in Europe and chiropractic is totally different than the world in the United States. They can do in a lot of countries what they want. And so they're excited to take people and turn them on to the chiropractic philosophy, to turn them on to that innate power, to turn them on to the magic of the body and how an adjustment just changes their whole life. And I always look forward to go back and share with them because they, uh, these guys, we're not talking about people that were in practice like a couple of weeks. or that, that One of the, the ER docs, she was in practice for 13 years as an ER doc in a hospital. And when I, when I, we spoke to her, she goes, yeah, I see people in my, my, my apartment that have an adjusting table in front of my bed. So I go, why don't you just open up a real practice? She goes, yeah, I'm working on it. They're just as scared as we are, by the way. Real successful, you know, ER practice, but I want to be a chiropractor. I want to be a chiropractor. And we were supposed to go back in June with, until they screwed up all the flights um, and couldn't go to Europe, but she opened a, her own office chiropractic office. Because all the nurses in the hospital that you were kept coming in to get a Jessica. Why don't you, where, where can we take, send patients to? So my, my thing here is get excited. And like, like Stu Ketson said, how you do anything in life is how you do everything in life. When you live that, no matter where you go, you can be a great chiropractor. No matter who you speak to, you bring chiropractic to it. It's allowed us to travel around the world sharing chiropractic with everyone. And, and you know, I, I was really touched by, by all these things. But I got to tell you, the thing that touches me the most is the, <clears throat> is the student testimonials. The students that talk about what we do. Because to me, my goal is a, a thing we call it in, in Life Philosophy, to be able to have every person have the ability to get a chiropractic adjustment and or a chiropractic education if they choose. And the way I can do that is by getting students excited about chiropractic. Because if I can adjust 100 people, but then I have 10,000 students doing the same thing, I'm adjusting millions of people a day. And that's my mission. That's me changing the world. Thank you. <clears throat> Jay Han, Lifetime Achievement Award winner. My